Good afternoon, everybody. This is Bobby Strauss with Conservative Voice of the People, and we are here at the Western Conservative Summit in Colorado, and we are very excited to have a special guest this afternoon, Susan Combs, the Comptroller of the State of Texas. Thanks, Bobby. Welcome. We're happy you're here with us today. Now, we really wanted to focus today on something that you you want to hit on quite a bit, and that's the Endangered Species Act. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about that and what's happening in Texas. Um, you know, about oh, 40 years ago, 1973, the United States Congress passed what we've all heard of, the Endangered Species Act. When it was enacted, it was to save a few species that might be at risk of extinction, and nobody ever expected it to be as invasive, as intrusive, and as uh, a serious and economic hit to a particular economy as it's become. Remember the spotted owl spotted owl right. uh, problem for all of those loggers in the Pacific Northwest, you know, 100 plus thousand jobs were basically relocated because of the seriousness of the act and because of the fact that you can't do much about it. Mm-hmm. So there have been example after example, a snail, a snail darter, a fish, a bird, etc. And there have been a number of efforts to reform and revise the act, and not a single one has happened. Today, in the U.S., there are 1,194 species listed as endangered. That's and enough, quite a few. That's a, it's a whole bunch. And then another 339 as threatened. And what makes this a challenge? And I would say this in my job as comptroller for Texas. I'm the chief revenue estimator. I am the tax collector. I handle the books. I'm the treasurer. And so uh, as the chief financial officer, I take a look at possible economic threats to our state's uh, and citizens' livelihood. And one of the things about this act that makes it so difficult for anybody, businessman, governor, uh, you know, rancher to deal with is that you can't find out what's next. Mm-hmm. There is uh, a bunch of these species already listed, as I told you. There's another whole bunch of species under review, and you can't find that list. And there's a third bunch of things, <laughs> birds, fish, whatever, that may or may not overlap, and you can't find that out, and that's sort of list number three. Well, how did this happen? used to be that you would see across the country 10, 15, 20 new things, animals, plants, birds, salamanders, lizards, being proposed. But there was this giant surge in 2004. 2004. So what was the the catalyst? Well, there's a weird provision. It's It's a part of the act that allows a citizen... Just plain old John Q. Public or uh, a left-lending organization to propose in a petition a whole slew of things alleging that uh, the Department of Interior, through its agency, Fish and Wildlife, has been a slacker that they haven't listed them enough. They haven't gotten a 120-day deadline, day deadline or 90 days or 180. Mm-hmm. And so what they did in 04, they got very smart. They outgunned us. They got very, very smart. And in that one year, they listed, proposed to be listed, 252 species. And I've got a chart here that I'll show you later. But you can see for years and years and years, no petitions for animals at all. That all of a sudden, bang. And so there was this enormous surge. The agency, Fish and Wildlife, was overwhelmed. Right. There was a hard statute deadline. You shall do X, Y, and Z. They couldn't do it, and they settled. So if you ever hear the phrase sue and settle with relating to this act, it's because Fish and Wildlife threw up their hands and said, I'm so sorry, we cannot possibly deal with this stuff. And so they settled a couple of years ago for about 800 species that would be sort of fast-tracked and looked at. And and so so what are the implications of that? The implications of that are, well, your legal options are few unless you're on the sort of attacking sides. What do I mean by that? Um, let's suppose you're uh, the governor of Colorado, uh, or you're a rancher in Colorado, or you're uh, a business owner that wants to build a you know, facility out in the country. Whatever state you're in, it doesn't matter. 
you will have to take a look in your backyard and see if there is a species that might be uh, ready to sort of bite your economic balloon uh, in some form of fashion. So, so, so just uh, sorry to interrupt you, but along those lines, so in Colorado, what you're saying is there may be 800 species. We don't know what they are. Well, we, we've got a website. All right, and, go right ahead. And so we can tell you this. What we tried to do is we've got a national database. It's a website. It's www.keepingtexasfirst.org. And we have a map showing the entire United States. And you can click on your state, and it will show you the species that is, we think, the best right. information we have, we think, <laughs> in your state. What Colorado can do, and it's very hard, is Colorado can call your local U.S. Fish and Wildlife uh, Agency, which would be located in Denver, and ask them. Well, the problem is they may not know. All they'll know is what's already on a, a list right now being worked. But suppose a guy in Illinois, mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow uh, Monday afternoon, a guy in Illinois proposes a new species in Colorado. He's not in Colorado. He's in Illinois. Just anybody. Yes. It happened to us. Uh, a guy in Illinois proposed a skunk, the Plains Spotted Skunk, be listed, and it covers one-third of the eastern United States in its habitat. Well, our fish and wildlife guys in Albuquerque had no clue it was coming. I'm sure your Colorado guys had no clue. So this just comes out of anywhere. So any person yep. can just bring this yes. to, the, to the front, to the yes. federal government? Yes. Under the Administrative Procedures Act, part of the ESA, the Endangered Species Act, which has all these timetables, all these very strict requirements that you shall, if you're the federal government, you shall give us an answer. So what happens is, whether it's Colorado or Texas, these things come in so fast, they're like scud missiles, you can't right. keep up with them. <laughs> you can't keep up. And the second thing is, well, well, suppose you don't want it to be listed. What's your legal option? Mm -hmm. Terrible. You cannot... As a citizen, as a governor, as anybody, you cannot object to the listing of the brown turkey. I'm making this up. <laughs> until it is listed. And by then, all of the responsibilities and obligations and legal problems attendant to the brown turkey being listed have taken place, and you are in deep trouble. It's a three- to five-year legal thing while everybody in Colorado worried about the brown turkey, this, this mythical turkey, tries to deal with it. So the Endangered Species Act allows no lawsuit against the listing until it is listed. 